Hello and welcome to DevWave Diaries. If you're ready to level up your web design skills, you've come to the perfect place. In today's video, I'll show you how to create this glowing button animation to create visually stunning, interactive designs. Let's get into it. Let's start by creating a div with the class container. Inside this div, add a button element with the class btn. Within the button tag, include a span tag and write the text submit. Next, let's add a CSS variable by writing style equals CLR hash 65 BBF0. Here, CLR is the CSS variable and it stores the color value hash 65 BBF0. Now, duplicate the button two more times by using the shortcut Alt plus Shift plus down arrow key. This allows you to quickly copy and paste the button onto the next lines. After that, update the CLR CSS variable values exactly as I've shown you in the video. Make sure to match the colors to what's demonstrated so the buttons look as intended. This is all the HTML code we need to set up the animation. Now, let's move on to the CSS part. First, we'll set up the CSS boilerplate. This includes setting margin and padding to zero to remove any default spacing added by browsers. Then, we set box sizing to border box, which will include padding and borders within the element's dimensions. Finally, we apply a font family of sans serif to give our text a modern, clean look. Next, we'll style the HTML and body elements. Set the width to 100% and the height to 100% to ensure they take up the entire viewport. Then, set the background color to hash 000 for a dark background. Now, let's style the container div. Set the width to 100% and height to 100vh to make it take up the entire viewport height. Use display, flex to create a flexible layout, and set justify content, center and align items, center to center the buttons both horizontally and vertically. Finally, set gap, 2 or em to add space between the buttons. Open the browser, and you should see three buttons centered in the middle of the screen. Next, we'll style the button. Set its position to relative to allow for positioning elements within it later. Add padding, 1.5 rem 3 rem to make the button spacious. Set its width to 14 rem for a consistent size. Use color, hash 999 for the text color and set background, hash 2d 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 for the button's background color. Increase the text size with font size, 1.5 rem and apply text transform, uppercase for a bold, uppercase style. Add letter spacing, 0.2 rem to space out the letters slightly. Use border radius, 50 pixel to make the edges rounded. Then, set border, none to remove the default border. Add transition, 0.5 second for smooth hover effects and set cursor, pointer to indicate interactivity. Open the browser, and you'll see the three buttons clearly displayed. Now, let's add a hover effect to the button. Use the hover pseudo class and set the color to var, clr. This will change the text color of the button to the value of the clr variable when hovered, giving each button a dynamic appearance based on its assigned color. Open the browser and hover over each button. You'll notice that the text color changes to the specific color defined by that CLR variable for each button. After that, add text shadow, 0010 pixel var, CLR, 0040 pixel var, CLR. This will create a glowing text effect. Now, open the browser and hover over the buttons. You'll see the text glowing with the color set by the variable, Next, let's add some style to the span tag inside the button. Set its position to relative and z-index to 1. This will ensure the span element stays on top of other elements inside the button. Now, let's create a before pseudo element for the button. First, set its content to an empty string. Then, set the position to absolute. This positions the pseudo element relative to the closest positioned ancestor. Set top, 0 and left, 0 to place it at the top left corner of the button. Apply a transform of translate, minus 50%, minus 50%, to center it. Set the width and height to 200 pixel to add some size. 
Then, apply a background with a radial gradient starting with VAR, CLR, in the center, fading to transparent. This creates a circular glowing effect around the button. Now, open the browser, and you'll see a glowing ball, positioned in the top left corner of the button. This ball is created by the before pseudo element with a radial gradient, giving it a glowing effect that matches the button's color. Next, let's add overflow, hidden to the button. This ensures that any part of the glowing effect or other elements extending beyond the button's boundaries will be clipped and not visible. After that, let's add some additional styles to the before pseudo element. Set a transition of 0.5 seconds for smooth animations, adjust top and left to 0 second for immediate positioning changes, and set the opacity to 0 to make the glowing ball initially invisible. Next, let's add a hover effect for the before pseudo element. When the button is hovered, set the opacity to 1. This will make the glowing ball visible, creating an engaging hover animation. Now, let's create an after pseudo element for the button. Set its content to an empty string and position to absolute, allowing it to position itself relative to the button. Use inset, 3 pixel to create an inner padding effect within the button. Set its background color to hash 2d2dcc and apply a border radius of 47 pixel to give it rounded edges, matching the button's overall style. Here, we use border radius of 47 pixels for the after pseudo element because the button's overall border radius is 50 pixels. Since we've applied an inset of 3 pixels, reducing the radius by 3 ensures the inner element aligns perfectly with the button's rounded edges. Now, open the browser and hover over the buttons. You'll notice that the text starts glowing, and the corners of the button also have a glowing effect. This happens because the button's after pseudo element is layered on top of the button. It acts as a filter, allowing the glowing effect from the before pseudo element to shine through, enhancing the overall design. This is all for the CSS part. Now, let's move on to the JavaScript portion. Now, let's create a variable named buttons. Assign its value using document.querySelectorAll and pass.btn as the argument. This will select all the buttons with the class btn. Next, use buttons.forEach to loop through each button. Inside this, create a function with the parameter btn. This parameter will represent each button as we iterate over the list of buttons selected earlier. After that, use btn.addEventListener to listen for the mouse move event on each button. Inside the method, pass mouse move as the event type and create a function with the parameter e. This parameter e will capture the event object. Inside the function, create a variable named x set its value to e.pageX-btn.offsetLeft. This calculates the horizontal position of the mouse pointer relative to the button. Now, copy the line you just wrote and make the following changes, replace x with y, change page x to page y, and replace offset left with offset top. This calculates the vertical position of the mouse pointer relative to the button. Next, use btn.style.setProperty to dynamically update a CSS variable. Inside it, set the property name to x and its value to x plus px. This will assign the calculated horizontal position of the mouse to the x variable. Now, copy the previous line and make the following changes. Update the variable name from x to y and set the value to y plus px. This will assign the calculated vertical position of the mouse to the Y variable. Now, open the browser and then open the inspect window. Select any button, and you'll notice that it has X and Y variable values. When you hover over the button, these values will dynamically update based on the mouse movement, reflecting the current position of the pointer relative to the button. We are going to use these variable values in our CSS. Let's move back to the CSS file. Inside the styles for the before pseudo element, change the top value from 0 to var, y, and the left value from 0 to var, x. Open the browser and hover over the button. You'll notice that the glowing effect now moves along with the mouse pointer, creating a stunning and dynamic glowing button animation that responds to mouse movement. If you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful, please give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to stay updated with all our latest content. Your support helps us create more exciting and valuable videos.
Thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode of DevWave Diaries.